Hi, it's day winter 47. I had to say yesterday I made the mistake of showing this night jump to F6 but it was actually the other night. So it continues like that and here the evil doesn't mind this move as much but after I just hang the knight it's GG. Once the game continues something like that. So yeah, this makes more sense because even here after I hang the knight the second time or for the first time I still can't take the queen because it would still be checkmate, <laughs> right? And the move that I showed you yesterday wasn't actually checkmate, um, but it was close. So this game starts with our good friend the Roy Lopez, but I get to play white and he goes for the boring old Steinitz. So that's what we see. Here I couldn't resist doubling up his pawns. I wasn't sure if this was there or not, but I just wanted to go for it. Um, here I... You know what? Maybe this isn't a theory, but I wanted to do it anyway, because I thought that I would have something to play for. They go h6, which I thought was weird because it's slow. And... Because... Mainly because it misses a point of e5. Like, my whole setup here is to put pressure down the king, and so naturally I want to break it open with e5. And here, I don't know if their knight could have moved away or something. Let's check this out. Yeah, maybe that's immediately extremely bad because it's undeveloping. And even if I take, I thought they could just take like that. Oh, but then I take like this. Okay, so it's extremely bad. <laughs> it's extremely bad. Um... So yeah, so actually e5 is forcing. e5 is forcing enough that they have to take it. But the point is that once they take, now they have these ugly isolated pawns. So I take back with the queen because I wanted to keep up the pressure of this pin and also I c7, he castles, so he drops another pawn, or he drops a pawn. Um, he doesn't want to trade. Here the engine wants me to castle long, but I frankly didn't consider that during the game because I normally don't like to castle when they have an open file they can attack me with. I just castle the other way. Now he wants to trade knights. I assume the engine calls it a mistake because they're already down a pawn, so why trade? Here I didn't really understand. This move I thought was weird uh, because he drops another pawn. <laughs> like he's already down a pawn, he's dropping another pawn. How I can justify this is I think he was wanting to give pressure on the C file, but he forgot that my knight is protecting C2. So he doesn't actually have anything. He moves the queen out of the way of the pin. Um, I support my knight and push C3, blunting the impact of the rook down the open file. So now he tries to do something with my queen. I get out of the way. Here he goes, bishop G4, which I don't know why the engine thinks is that bad of a mistake. And here, I think, yeah, in retrospect, I should have just done something like push a pawn up the board or even push this guy. Let's see what h3 does. Maybe that's not as good. But just like a quiet move, even f3, even though that's bad. But like, um, I don't know, like just, just like any one of these like small little moves pushing pawns is fine. But here I had to, I could not resist seeing some fancy tactics that probably didn't exist on the board. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I couldn't resist playing and what the refutation was? Do you see what the refutation was? Basically, I saw knight c6 and I saw that this hits a queen and once a queen moves, I could fork them. I could fork them again. And I don't know if I saw if the bishop could take, but even if it could, then my, knight, then my rook could get up on the seventh rank. So I was like very excited about this. And I even saw that the queen could come to f6. But in my mind, I was like, eh, that's fine. That's fine because even if she hits my bishop, all this stuff comes first. However, I was deadly wrong because I play this move and he goes queen f6. And the minute he plays queen f6, I'm immediately like, oh, effing f. I blundered. I immediately know I blundered because seeing it on the board is different than just imagining something right because immediately this is a double attack he hits my knight twice i forgot that when the queen comes f6 that my knight will be hit twice so in my mind i was like the bishop can move out of the way whatever and then my knight can do this but no i can't because i'm about to lose a piece so i'm really really struggling to find a save here 
And it's it's doubly bad because they're also staring at F2. So I was calculating a bunch of lines and I I didn't know what to do. Here the engine wants me to just go for that check anyway. And I, I'm not really impressed with this line because after something like this, it's just wild, but I don't know. We're just even. Basically, I went from completely winning to just drawn. So I I don't like that. So what I found, I was actually pretty proud of, although the engine is not so pleased. Um, I pushed before. The point being, I, I thought that their best move was to take bishop takes f2 chuck and after my qu king takes then to hit me with chuck and then I move out of the way um and then after this pretty much I lost my advantage because I'm they've recovered a pawn and who's to say like I don't know they got a bishop I don't know it just doesn't feel as great for me I also saw maybe they could take with a queen and this is also a possibility, but I thought probably this was their best bet after b4. But he does a move that really surprises me. He plays rook takes my knight. I thought that queen even taking was better. But after rook takes, I was confused. I, I didn't consider this move at all. And I think the reason why is because, yeah, after this takes, the point is he can no longer take my bishop because the rook is hang. So this was just really weird for me. Um... So yeah, so now he goes bishop c8, which I didn't think was a blunder at the time. I thought rook takes was a blunder. However, that was only an inaccuracy, and the bishop going back is the real blunder here. Here, the engine would have preferred rook takes c5. Um, and we're still pretty much drawn. So, so yeah, but after bishop c8, I can immediately get out of the way. The engine doesn't like this either by protecting my bishop. Unjun would prefer that I just have gone to the less crazy square of b4 instead, instead of going on the back rank where I was eyed by the rook. <laughs> the queen takes my pawn, but now I feel very excited. I feel very, very excited because now my bishop can go to the natural square where it protects my past pawn and also is just a major, major pain in the ass for them. It's just a thorn on their side. I knew that once I could play this move, it would be a huge problem for them. <clears throat> Unless they want to give up an exchange in the future by getting rid of my bishop and my pass pawn, it would be a huge problem for them. I was very, very pleased with this resulting position because I thought, okay, they didn't punish me for my blunder. Now I feel better again. So I started to feel pretty confident. I saw all this happening and I saw that I could win this pawn back. So I was pretty happy. But according to this, it's only, it's still a draw because the queen could just, I guess I had to come back. I guess they could trade and still target a2. So maybe I was confident too soon as always. But after this, I felt better because I saw that my rook can come and defend my a pawn along the side. I keep chasing the queen around. And here I keep chasing the queen around, but the engine actually suggests a very sexy move here of going on for checkmating ideas which is much hotter obviously but i'm sometimes when i'm like on one track it's hard to like switch gears and look at another track so when i was looking at like oh let's chase the queen around let's force a trade let's push our pawn i wasn't looking at oh what is new is in the position what else could i do what other tactics are there arising from this afresh um and i should have seen that okay Going after the queen is cool, but rook g3 going after the king is even hotter. Yeah, after this, we provoke some weakos. And now they actually give up an exchange, and now we're just solidly, solidly crushing. Um, so eventually the queen just relents and just gives, her up, gives herself up for the trade, and now I just feel really, really good. Because then I move my pawn up to a dark square where it can't be hit by the bishop. So I started just... Do I feel cocky? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe 1.3 advantage is not enough to warrant like such confidence, but I already felt like, you know, I, I just felt better. And this move I I thought was kind of a waste of time because I didn't see what he was playing for, although the engine doesn't like my move either. Um, we both played pretty inaccurately according to the engine. Um, I offer a trade, he doesn't want to trade. 
I just keep pushing that pawn. So yeah, so I saw that once I doubled up, now I can get my bishop to c7, which would defend the bishop, which would defend the pawn like that, and when it needed to, it could come here to b6 and defend both of these guys. So I was pretty happy with how this was turning out. I cut off the king with trade rooks. Um, here the engine doesn't actually like me activating my king like this. And it's weird because I made a point of remembering to get my king in. Because normally I have a problem of not activating my king enough. And my opponent then finds counterplay, etc, etc. So I actually explicitly tried to get my king in. But that was a mistake because of what you see. I got checked. And here I should have just ducked for cover. But I... I saw this, but I discounted it that it wasn't as big of a problem. But this is actually a huge blunder. Because with this move, he could actually keep checking me. But in the game, he doesn't check me. Um, but if he had checked me, it would actually have been kind of an issue. Because I just go back to run away, the engine wants me to run away. But even something like this, it's not so clear. I'm technically I ran away, but... I'm not sure about this, basically. I'm not sure. Um, so basically, I, I guess I did blunder, although it didn't seem like it. I was still very confident. Um, but the I wasn't scared. Why, why I allowed this is because I saw that they can't go for a rook, or they can't go for a pawn, because after rook d1 chuck, then they lose this bishop. So he sees the same thing, and he just withdraws the bishop, although he should have chucked me on e3. So now I can just give him that chuck anyway, and now I'm better, because now if he gives me a chuck, at least I can defend myself. Um, so here, yeah, I should have been gone for more activity. I should have been more active, gotten up there, and started pushing, baby, just going for it. Um, however, what I do is I offer a rook trade, which I thought was natural. I thought it was only natural to convert here. I thought, hold on, let's go back. I thought going here was just such a natural move because after taking back, I thought with these two passers to occupy the king and the bishop here, now I can come in and start attacking these guys. But according to the engine's huge blunder, I actually lose my advantage had they done the proper thing. So if they did a hasty push or pawn and instead of activated their king, it was only a draw or their bishop, or anything but the pawns. Just don't touch the pawns. But these pawn, king pawn endgames are so tricky. I mean, and with bishops on the board, are just so disgusting. Like, you would think with friggin' two extra pawns that this is completely winning for me. This is what I thought. I assessed this as completely winning. But after this whole shebang, it's just a draw? I can't believe it. It's like, it's hard to even believe, but... It's hard to believe, but what can I say? My king can't get in there because the pawns control me. And I can't make progress because I don't control the light squares. So maybe I could bring my king over to try to push them, but at that point, then their king could come in. I don't know, but apparently I blundered, <laughs> and apparently they don't punish me. So here, um, now I'm completely winning, but now I blunder. <laughs> And if they had just pushed g4, then apparently it's a draw again. These things are so tricky, man. Just look at this. Who would have thought? I can't make any progress here. Who would have thought? It's, an, it's entirely insane to me. You would think that these guys would do the job, but they don't. They just don't. I don't get it. I mean, I don't really understand the mechanics of this. All I can tell myself is just to be very careful in the future. Because it just might not work. <laughs> so the best bet, what the engine wanted was to save, to keep the rook on the board to support the pass pawn, to push that pawn of victory. But the rook's off, it's actually very, very tricky with opposite color bishops. Yeah, it's, it's a whole opposite color bishop problem. And I don't think my opponent fully, fully realized the import of that either because he was just madly pushing his pawns without considering that it could still be a draw. So here, G3 is a mistake. I should have just taken the guy, right? Just simply taking is still a win for me because now my king can come in. Now I can create a pass pawn and he's not in time to shoulder me. 
now I can just create a pass pawn on this side of the board so that, you know, they can't work both sides of the board at once. But after this, I'm, I, I still felt like I was complete winning after this. I felt so confident with this whole thing. Um, but kudos to my opponent because he actually plays a very tricky move here. He plays this move. Uh, do you see what his plan is? He's trying to trick me into stalemating. Because once I go here, the king can't actually go anywhere. And the bishop can't go anywhere because it's pinned. So this is called a stalemate. <laughs> but I see through that and I don't go there. I just come down here instead. And he's still playing for tricks, but now there are no, no more tricks left on the board. And there's GG. Checkmate on the board. So I felt when I was playing this, I felt it was pretty smooth. I felt it was like... I felt pretty confident. I mean, I don't know, like, yeah, but just the whole endgame analysis shows you that it's insane. It's like, even with all that, yeah, let's just change to view mode real quick so you can see. Just like, with one, with one freaking flippant move, you can tr lose all of your advantage. Like, two pawns up, you think are so great. Just being kind of reckless with one move just drops the whole thing. Huge blunder. Even in the end game, still up, so, so happy, still imprecise, and could have just drawn. So it's like, this game was actually really, really loose. Um, six inaccuracies, two mistakes, four blunders, 85% accuracy only. Um, so yeah. So yeah. I guess I just have to be more careful. Um, yeah. <laughs> when I can just do sensible, calm things, like push the A pun, just do that. Uh, don't still look out for tactical opportunities. Even when you're like focused on one goal, be open to potentially other things being even juicier, open up for you down the road. Like when I was chasing their queen and I could have come for rook g3 instead. And in the end game with opposite color bishops, that two pawn advantage is like nothing. Like, I can't believe it, but there you go. Like, they could have actually saved this game so many times. And if he had gone home and reviewed this, maybe he would kick himself for it. But I, I quite enjoy playing this game because it was against someone who I considered a friend. I mean, that's a kid, but like I play blitz with him like several, several times. We like play casually. He's a really good kid. He's a good, he's a good, he's like a nice kid. Um, he kind of like ranked up with me. Like we both improved, but now he's like past me because he plays more regularly. So he's like now a few hundred points high rated, I think. But now I'm catching up to him because I beat him. <laughs> um, so it's fun playing against people you're friendly with because like during the game, one of his pieces, like the rook bottom, kept on falling off, and we were like laughing at it. <laughs> and it was like, it was just like, it was like good vibes, you know? And I enjoy that. So, okay, so at the end of this, um, to wrap up, I would like to give a huge, huge shout out. Thank you. Thank you so much to my supporters, my viewers. Uh, Dance a Man, 200 bits, the old pawn, two gift of subs, the game 2K, $10. Thank you so much. And Girl Habanero, I was, I was like, wow, I was like, oh my God, $66. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, yeah, you've supported me so generously and supported my art, supported me, and everybody, everybody has supported me. All of you guys listed here have been so, so, so kind, and the ones who's not listed here, too. Those who have donated, those who have contributed their time and energy, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Good night, good night. And I don't know if you like this review. Today, I just kind of decided to mesh the review and the game together normally i like talk about the game first and then i review it but i just this was more expedient i guess <laughs> so let me know what you prefer um we will go back to playing rapid games eventually okay but not today <laughs> bye